to understand the various things we'll first of all see the various atmospheric layers the first layer in which we are all there ground level to approximately 10 kilometers above mean sea level is known as the troposphere 99% of the water vapor of the entire atmosphere is present in this region 99% that means almost the whole lot is present in this region air pressure and temperature in this region drops with increase in height ground level can vary from 0 degrees in the arctic for example sub zero and the tropics it can go up 30 40 degrees centigrade but as we go up in the atmosphere the temperature goes down typically to 0 degrees kelvin uh, 0 degrees centigrade i'm sorry 0 degrees centigrade around 3 to 4 kilometers above earth's height about the above the mean sea level and then above 10 kilometers it is uh, called the stratosphere approximately uh, from top of the troposphere to 50 kilometers above mean sea level is mainly containing ozone in a large portion uh, the high energy uv light from sun produces considerable ionization in this region this is a very important phenomena as far as lighting is concerned it produces a lot of what we call ionization that means dissociation of the neutral molecules of air nitrogen oxygen etc into ions in a, into a, in a substantial proportion the temperature in stratosphere goes on becoming warmer with height it lacks turbulence and updrafts because of the lack of turbulence and updraft it is a very attractive zone for commercial aircraft to here to fly there will be no turbulence the flight will be quite comfortable comparatively in the troposphere there can be a lot of turbulence which can be felt by the aircrafts and therefore it can be very risky also that's why most of the commercial aircrafts uh, take to the stratosphere region for flight for the for the major part of the flight then we come to the mesosphere it is above the atmosphere above the stratosphere up to about 85 km above mean sea level the temperature gets to minus 90 degrees centigrade at around 85 km the pressure is very very low approximately 1% of the atmospheric pressure the standard atmospheric pressure is 760 mm of mercury at the mean sea level that means the pressure is around 7.6 mm 760 mm 1% of that is about 7.6 mm is what we call in um, vacuum terminology as a soft vacuum in this region in this region of pressures electrical discharge will be what we call glow discharges what i happens in tube lights typically tube lights there is a, a low pressure discharge or a glow discharge about the mesosphere you have got the thermosphere uh, above 85 km and then the temperature here goes up to 2000 degrees centigrade but in contrast that what we can also say is air is, air is very very thin it feels extremely cold so why is this contradiction we say very high temperature up to 2000 degrees centigrade on the one hand and we say it feels very cold remember temperature is a direct measure of the energy of the molecules in the air therefore whatever molecules are there in the thermosphere they are very very energetic but the so called mean free path of this will be in hundreds of meters that means if a person stands there the air molecules will not collide with him frequently at all so he is not able to feel the energy of these molecules he feels only the coldness of the atmosphere at that temperature at that in that region they we say therefore because of this we say it feels very cold on the other hand the energy is very high 400 degrees centigrade to 2000 degrees centigrade the contrasting statements this is the explanation for that then we have got the highest layer layer of the atmosphere exosphere is probably the final frontier of the earth's surface earth's gaseous envelope it is extremely thin the so called mean free path or the distance between successive collisions of the air molecules can be in kilometers not meters not centimeters not even kilometers it can be many many kilometers it is extremely thin it leaks into outer space the top of the exosphere is variously estimated to be 100000 kilometers to maybe 190000 kilometers so this is exosphere these are the overall thing but for interest to us from the lightning point of view is it what we call the ionosphere 
this ionosphere is a very important uh, parameter in the phenomena of lightning, particularly the lower ionosphere, about which I will be mentioning just a little later. Ionosphere happens to be what we call the positive electrode of the global capacitor. We will be talking about the global capacitor in some more details a little later. Ionosphere is not a distinct layer by itself. It's a mixture of a few other layers. It extends from approximately 85 kilometers above Earth to approximately 500 kilometers above Earth. The estimated electrical potential or the voltage with respect to Earth it's not a small number, it's 250,000 volts, 250 kilovolts to approximately 300,000 volts, that means 300 kilovolts. Remember, it's a huge voltage and the lower atmosphere in particular has got this potential nearly constant with respect to Earth. That means Earth is an elective electrode with respect to Earth, this lower atmosphere is at a high potential, positive potential of 250 kilovolts to 300 kilovolts, which is nearly constant. Now, this high voltage here induces negative charges on the Earth's surface. It induces negative charges on the Earth's surface. The lower atmosphere, about which I mentioned as an important part of the lightning activity, is extends from approximately 50 kilometers above Earth to 75 kilometers above Earth's surface. We call this the global capacitor, about which we'll see a little later. The lower atmosphere is also known as the electrosphere because of the electrical charge and the charge domain. Now, this is the picture of the so-called global capacitor. It is not really to scale. I've shown Earth and then the lower atmosphere. This is the Earth, of course, with negative charges on the surface all around, everywhere, induced by the positive charge in the lower ionosphere. This is the lower ionosphere, which is positively charged because of solar radiations, ultraviolet radiations, cosmic radiations, etc. It's ionized and then it has got large of large amount of positive charges, and therefore it is the positive electrode of the so-called global capacitor. So we'll see that Earth is a negative electrode and the lower ionosphere is the positive electrode of this capacitor, which we call as the global capacitor. Now, not to scale again, the cloud is shown here, typically around two to three kilometers above our surface, up to about 10 to 13 kilometers above our surface. Obviously, not to scale. Don't get worried about this uh, dimensions. I have to make it clear to be seen by the audience. Therefore, I have shown it a little big. It will be just a line, nothing more than that. Above the our surface, uh, sorry, above the cloud, we have got a region where we have got the so-called transient luminous events, which were shown a little earlier. The sprites, the blue jets, tendrils, and the elves, they occur in this region. In fact, together, these cloud charges and the elves together take positive charges to the lower atmosphere. I will we'll be discussing about that much later, but we'll see this positive voltage of 300 kilovolts above our surface is nearly constant, nearly constant. It varies between 250 kV to 300 kV. Sometimes there can be more fluctuations. Area-wise, there can be fluctuations. It may be more here, it may be less here. All these are statistical. All these are statistical. Similarly, the Earth will have negative charge. The charge density may be varying from point to point. We have got soil, we have got uh, mountains with ice, we have got seas. So everywhere there can be variations. We can give the typical characters of this global capacitor a little later. Now, this global capacitor plays an extremely significant role in lightning and the transient luminous events. The characters of the global capacitor are now mentioned in this table. Now, to summarize the whole lot, the lower ionosphere, which we saw just a little while ago, is nearly 250 to 300 kV, near constant voltage, nearly constant voltage with respect to Earth. Earth is the negative electrode. So this is the global capacitor. Now, the average leakage current now is about 3 into 10 to the power of minus 12 amperes per square kilometer. The usual terminology in electroneering is that it's 3 pico amperes per square meter. Now, if you take a metal sheet of, let me say, uh, four meters by four meters, mount it behind our backyard, 
and ground it through a picoameter, we can measure some 50 picoamperes. Anywhere, approximately maybe 30 to 50 microamperes, 60 picoamperes, you can measure it. So that shows you, yes, this is true. There's an average leakage current right from the ionosphere to the ground, and leakage of current from the lower net pass here to ground. Now, the average charge density on the Earth's surface is approximately about 1.1 to 10 to the minus 9 coulombs per meter squared. Now, if you take the ratio of the voltage, 300 kilovolts, uh, okay, I will come back to that again. The average current density I have shown you is 3 picoamperes per square meter. If you consider the whole Earth's surface, multiplied by the, multiply the current density by the by the so total surface area, the total leakage current will be approximately 2,000 or 3,000 amperes. This current leaks from the lower atmosphere to Earth. Why does it leak? It's a very interesting question. If air is a very good dielectric, ideal dielectric, this current will not come into picture at all. But the atmospheric air is getting ionized by the cosmic radiation, solar radiation, ultraviolet rays from various sources. It gets ionized. Every second, approximately 6 to 12 electron ion pairs are created because the interaction of this cosmic energy with these neutral molecules of the air, that means nitrogen, oxygen, etc., all the gases, they get ionized. 6 to 12 uh, electron ion pairs are created. So this forms the, uh, this helps to form the current. The positive charges come down to Earth, the negative charges go to the on atmosphere, the lower ionosphere. So that forms the leakage current. So if you measure the total leakage current, that's the ratio of the voltage to the current, uh, the, rather the ratio of the current voltage to current use the effective resistance of the global capacitor insulation, so-called insulation, earth to lower atmosphere, lower ionosphere, the resistance is approximately 100 to 150 ohms, which is here. Now, Next thing is, what's the electric field at their surface? Remember, the potential of the ionosphere, low ionosphere, is around 300 kV. Earth is a negative electrode. So what's the electric field at the Earth's surface? Typically about 3 volts per centimeter. So, so if you think of a man, approximately 1.5 meters tall, from head to foot, there'll be approximately 4.5 volts. It's a very small voltage. It will not be sensed much because the current is too low and the human body also acts as a near charge cure for these currents. The impedance of the earth instead of the air around the person is much higher than the impedance of the uh, body. Therefore, it nearly acts as the charge cure. The voltage is not felt really. So I made a small mistake. Three volts per centimeter, that means 300 volts per meter. If you think of a 1.5 meters tall person, it will be 450 volts, which is a substantial voltage, but still the person does not sense any electrical shock because the current is very, very small. That is three pico amperes per square meter. A human act, um, person may be equivalent to approximately only 0.1 square meter. That means the current is extremely small. I must uh, mention here that the electric shock is mainly due to the current, not the voltage. The voltage drives the current. It's the current which creates all the sensations, as we'll see a little later. It's always the current in the lightning, which is a damaging feature. Current is the damaging feature. Current is a damaging feature. You can emphasize it many times. The voltage is the one which drives the current, but it's the current which causes the damages. So now, as the, as the, Yes, if, the, if you think of the lightning developing the ground from the cloud to ground, which we'll see a little later, typical field on the Earth's surface goes up to about 200 volts per centimeter to approximately 600 volts per centimeter, just before the lightning reaches the ground. Now, the average equivalent current per lightning stroke is two amperes. Now, supposing this leakage current flows continuously the capacitor must get discharged. If you take any capacitor or even a battery and short it, the, the voltage gets completely driven down to zero in a very short time. So, so why does this lower atmosphere remain at 300 kilovolts in spite of this huge leakage current of the order of uh, 
thousand to thousand five hundred. Sorry, two thousand to three thousand amperes. Its current is flowing. Why does not this cap the cap uh, global capacitor discharge, and the voltage goes to zero in a very short time, may maybe a few seconds? The phenomena which recharges this global capacitor, one of the major phenomena, is lightning. Is lightning. So lightning is nature's phenomena of recharging the global capacitor and retains the potential of the lower atmosphere approximately between 250 kilovolts to 300 kilovolts. I hope this point is very clear. There's a very important thing because li lightning is now nature's phenomena. One of the major phenomena of nature, which recharges the global capacitor so that it remains at a cons near constant potential of 250 kilovolts to 300 kilovolts. Now, estimate total number of lightning that takes place in the world per second is 3,000 to 5,000 strokes per second. The average equivalent current of lightning stroke is only two amperes. Two amperes. So these are the major. Characteristics, electrical characteristics of the global capacitor. So now we will see what is the importance of lightning. Of course, now we will go into the other aspects, the lightning, how it develops, and things like that. But these are the basic features of the electrical phenomena of the, uh, of the glo uh, global, uh, I should say, global electrical phenomena, atmospheric phenomena, of which lightning is only one part. But it a, plays a very important role of maintaining the potential of the global capacitor nearly constant at 250 to 300 kilovolts. I think this is summarizes this basic feature of the global electrical system.